Thank you for joining us wherever you are. This podcast episode is brought to you by the Old Ways Actual Play Team. This actual play uses the 7th edition Call of Cthulhu tabletop role-playing game rules by Chaosium. This actual play is performed by adults and in an adult setting. While we try very hard to stick to language for all ages, listeners should know that this podcast may include mature themes. All content, including names, places, events, companies, and etc., that may bear resemblance to entities living or dead, is strictly coincidental. My name is Michael Diamond, and for tonight's game, I will be your keeper. Thank you for joining us again in another episode of the Old Ways Podcast. I'm your keeper, Keeper Michael, and we return to Masks of Neothotep in our China chapter. Uh, so as we like to do at the top of the show, we'd like to thank you, the listener, and especially you, the Patreon supporter, for listening to the show and supporting us. We have a ton of amazing content coming in 2023, and this episode is part of that. And so I'd like to start with introductions to my right. This is Tiffany, and I play Maeve O'Shea, and um, things are interesting. Mm, indeed, indeed. And uh, to Miss O'Shea's right. This is Morgan. I play Lillian Lane, and I have a crush. It's true. Mm. You have a new boo. <laughs> At the end of the table. Hi, this is James, and I'll be playing Dr. Sigmund Tartenbach. And while everyone else is also furred and frustrated, I just enjoying a little monkeying around. Yeah, no, there's been quite a bit of monkeying around last episode, and certainly there may be even more this episode. Yeah, monkeys. But they're not monkeys. They're apes, members Gabby, of the yes. great ape family. That's very true. Oh, I <laughs> <laughs> to, to the doctors, right? Uh, this is Lonnie. I'm playing Robert Drummond, and I have all my limbs. I'm slinning. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I mean, absolutely. It is Where you could have been last episode, you may have been sans limb. Uh, to Mr. Drummond's right. Hi, this is Heather, and I, for the moment, am playing Stasi because uh, those uh, said apes and I, I think, may be becoming acquainted if uh, Madame Lim doesn't send uh, Lillian after me. Um, let's see if I can make it through this episode. Yeah, I'm a little bummed that nobody spent a ton of luck last session, so I'm going to redouble my efforts as a keeper. Last, most certainly not least. Uh, this is Alex playing Sam Bellon, who has a brand new Shina. Courtesy of one Mr. Jones. Uh, so we're going to raise the curtain tonight in a dark place. And no, I'm not talking about the inside of Dr. Tottenbach's bag. I am, in fact, talking about the upstairs of the estate of Madame Lynn, where one, Miss Fairchild, is uh, moving about, moving in a specific direction, hoping to find where that shadowy figure was headed in the first place. And so you have traveled down the length of this second floor all the way to that far side where there are two large doors, right? They sort of come together in a beautiful, singular, hand-carved picture. And you see a beautiful, sweeping, curved dragon that starts on the left-hand side and walks its way all the way up to the top of these amazing eight-foot doors and then comes down all the way to face you on the right-hand side. And there, the long tongue that comes out of this dragon is what makes up part of the door handle. It is a very impressive door. Well, I think I need to take a moment and examine, especially the dragon's head door handle uh, a little bit more closely before Mm -hmm. I touch it because I've learned from Lillian you don't need to stop touching things. Yeah, I mean, look first, then touch, right? Well, that's that's the idea. We'll see what happens. Very well. What are you going to attempt to uncover? Uh, I'd like to kind of roll a spot hidden to see if there are any uh, buttons, levers, uh, anything that may indicate some type of mechanisms, just as I would to see uh, lock mechanisms. So I've not seen anything like this before. I yeah. have picked locks before, and so I'm going to closely examine this to pick locks. Fantastic. Go ahead and give me a spot hidden roll. That is a nine under 65. Okay. So a couple of things are fairly evident. 
um, from from a trained eye. There doesn't appear to be any mechanism, secondary mechanism on this door handle that would incur you any specific harm from opening the door. It looks like a master crafted set of doors with a beautifully intricate handle and locking mechanism. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, it does appear to be in working, normal working order. From my vantage point, am I able to hear anything going on downstairs? Yeah, you are able to hear that there is some sort of um, dining experience going on downstairs. It's likely relatively close as far as its uh, spatial geography to you, although obviously there is an f- entire floor of the estate between you and them. Uh, you can hear Madame Lynn speaking to guests. You likely hear at some point um, Miss Lane speak, and then probably at some point Dr. Totten's, Tottenbach's voice bubbles up through uh, the conversation as well. The doors to the rooms on either side of this very impressive doorway. Mm-hmm. Looking at the doorway, rooms on either side of there? No, no, no rooms on this. In fact, this side of the... This sort of portion of the hallway here seems to be devoid of any other doors. Okay. Lean up against the door. Do I hear anything from the other side? Make me a listen roll. Now that is a 78 over 50. Okay. Be 28 points of luck to make that a success, or you could attempt to push the roll. Uh, You would just have to tell me, your keeper, how you were going to push it. In what way would you try that extra amount? You know what? Let's use some luck. Okay. So I will use 20 luck and I will make that roll. All right. You spend 20 points of luck and you make it a success. From inside, you hear a clock slowly, carefully ticking away. No other silence, I'm assuming. Not at this time. Okay, we're going to try and open the door. Okay, that would be a locksmith roll. No, that is a 78 over 21. Okay, so you begin picking the lock or attempting to. And after about 30 to 45 seconds of what we would call um, stern and forceful work with this set of tumblers, Maybe it's the way the doorknob and the lock are designed in in total, but it is really difficult for you to figure out just how to open this. Well, with that not being as successful as I would have liked it to have been, I think it's time to see what else I might be able to find. You say there's no other rooms on this side of the the house? Just this. Just this. What is the closest room to this room? Uh, To your left, probably about 15 to 20 feet, which is just after the hallway here, L's, there is a door. I will go try that door. Okay. Uh, It is locked as well. I would like to try to open that one. This one should be a little bit easier. Okay. Okay. And the dice and the locks are against me. That is, again, an 81 over 21. Okay. Um, Let's see. You said I'm near the kitchen. Mm Mm-hmm. It's likely downstairs, at least in some regard. I'd like to try. I'd like to make my way down. Okay. To the kitchen. So are you continuing that sort of member of staff? Yes. um, I belong here attitude? Yes. Okay. Alrighty. So you head downstairs. And you begin seeing some of the visuals of the ground floor. So hallways, tapestries, large, beautiful rooms, elegant furniture. Um, Down one hallway here is where the kitchen noise seems to pick up quite a bit. And there are staff members coming in and out of that space. So I I would like to enter the kitchen and try not to get in anyone's way. I would like to see if I can find some kind of sharp implement. 
uh, that I might be able to utilize. Okay. Upstairs. You head into the kitchen. Uh, it is in seemingly in, not in full force, but it's, uh, you know, chefs are still finishing up cleaning work. You can tell that there are people at one side that seem to be preparing something that's going to head out to the tables, you figure. Okay. Up, you are able to get close enough to uh, one of the preparatory areas where there are multiple knives of varying sizes, pairing, chef, etc. I am looking specifically, I think, for a couple of uh, at least one pairing knife uh, and possibly uh, one of these sharpening you know, the, the, the sticks, the, the ones that they use to sharpen with. Certainly. So those two, uh, one of each. That's that's kind of the goal. Okay, I don't think that's too terribly hard. What I would like is a stealth roll to see if anybody picks up on you doing that. That is a 51 over 85. Or under, excuse me, 51 under 85. There we go. Okay, you're able to acquire them. At least physically acquire them. Okay. I'd also like to utilize my acting. Okay. To really look like I'm trying to fit in, like I am meant to be there. I am part of the staff. Certainly. And I would like to spend two points of luck to actually make that work because that's a 57 over 55. So I will spend two more points of luck to make that a success. All right. I'm going to make an opposed spot hit and roll. We'll see how well you play. Okay. You seemingly have no issue picking up the knife and the knife sharpener. And my question to you then is where are you going after that? From the kitchen area, can I see into the dining space at all? Or? You can see a long hallway staff members are utilizing to get there. And there is a door that stands in between that space, the, the kitchen hallway space, and then the, the actual dining space. So there's a, is there a kitchen, a hallway, and then the dining space? Or is mm-hmm. it a, just directly from kitchen right into the dining area? No, there's a hallway there. Okay. Are there any doors coming off of that hallway besides into the dining room? Nope. Nope. It is just as. Okay. Then I will head back out of the kitchen the way I came. You head back out into the main portions of the estate. I would say it's a hallway, but they're, you know, it's 20 or 30 feet wide. It's not your normal hallway. It's a big estate hallway. So there's a lot of space to walk. There's a lot of um, paintings tapestries, uh, furniture that nobody sits in, that sort of thing. And I will head back upstairs. Okay. You turn the corner to head upstairs and you hear you there. In English or Cantonese? It's Cantonese. I stop, turn around, and in Cantonese with my eyes lowered. Yes. Where are you going? We are not done with dinner service. My apologies. I was... This was requested by uh, a guest upstairs. A guest? You hear a sort of inquisitory tone. Which guest? Uh, One of the guests that came, uh, that left prior. Now you're going to roll fast talk for me, Stasi. Okay, that's uh, an 88 over 83, so I'd like to spend five more luck. Okay. You spend the luck to make it a regular success. The uh, staff member who appears to be, you, I know you've you've sort of stared down at the floor, so you don't have a good judgment of whom they are. Uh, it's definitely a woman's voice. Uh, they say there are no guests upstairs. I was told there was a guest upstairs. Told too. by whom? Come here. Who are you? I step forward and would like to make a a maneuver. Okay, and what, what what type of maneuver? To swing around, bring the knife up to their throat, okay. and then come around and headlock the hand my hand around their their mouth. All right, so it's fighting brawl roll. Yeah, that is a sixty-two under seventy-three. Okay, you win the brawl roll. Uh, so you are going to engage in a maneuver. Um, so you get them positioned into a grapple. So you bring the knife up, and then are you attempting to grab hold of them and hold the knife to their throat? Yes. 
Okay. Um, so you hold the knife to their throat. You feel their you feel their body tense and you feel their chest fill with air. It is likely they're going to scream. Are you going to do something about that? So I would like to put my other hand over their mouth. So still keeping the knife to the throat on one hand, and then I have them wrapped around with the other. Okay. I'd also like to position my feet so that I am within for a, a fight grapple stance. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're going to be sort of backing around them and you're going to have a knife to their throat and then you're going to cover their mouth. That's reasonable as far as doing a, a fighting maneuver. Um, so I guess my question to you is, when they scream, what is Stasi prepared to do about it? Are we simply going to muffle them? Not necessarily. Okay. But I will say quietly in Cantonese, if you scream, you'll die. Hmm. Very good. So I want one very specific role first. The first role I want is a Cantonese role to make sure that they understand what you're saying. Unless that Cantonese is over 50%. Yes, Cantonese is 71. Okay, so you're fine. You okay. don't need to make that role. Now, you need to make a persuade role <laughs> to... To make your point, to drive your point home. I will make sure that the tip of the paring knife is actually touching the side of the neck mm-hmm. to make that point as well. Shall we say to drive the, drive the point home? And that is a 35 under 85 persuade. Okay. You could also throw a few extra points of charm in there if you like. I don't think any of this is charming at all. This is a direct persuade. You are threatening their life and telling them that if they speak, you'll kill them. So they tense and you feel them inhale and nothing happens except the pounding of your heart, the feeling of their, the warmth of their body as they are trying very hard not to panic. I will continue speaking in their ear. Let's go upstairs and take this somewhere more private, shall we? Quietly. Without rushing. You're going to begin moving them upstairs? Yes, I will start to kind of lean. Mm -hmm. Lean them in that direction and see if they move. They do appear to move with you. Then I will bring bring them with me. Okay. Back at our dinner table. It has been a wonderful dessert. Uh, beyond tea, there are other drinks for you, Miss O'Shea, and then obviously you, Miss Lane. If either one of you would like wine, you're welcome to have wine. Uh, the dessert is a yellow crab shell. So it's not actually a crab shell. <laughs> it's a beautifully baked and molded pastry uh, that's coated in sesame seeds that has like a sweet filling inside of it. There's almost a... Um, Perhaps an almond texture or or flavoring to it. It is phenomenal. It's really sort of the capstone to this amazing dinner. And so she says to you, Miss Lane, uh, Shanghai has much to offer, as does uh, some of the more, uh, well, refined people inside of it. I'm sure that you are staying at a appropriate hotel. Yes. Befitting your station. Yes, the the accommodations that we have chosen um, have been very comfortable and the, and the staff have been very accommodating. Good. So this crown you've purchased or you've brought from Egypt, mm-hmm. tell me more about where it came from. Who wore it? Do you know anything about it? I'm having like a hard time concentrating because I'm just enamored with Madame Lynn. I think enamored is one word, yes. Mm. You know, Miss O'Shea is so much more knowledgeable about where the crown came from than I. I, you know, I, you know, is it hot in here? Are you uncomfortable? I can have someone bring you some water. Oh, that would be wonderful. It is quite warm. Perhaps open a window, take off a scarf from us. Oh. Duck kind of pipes up from the background with a wry smile. W-R-Y and R-Y-E. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to ignore him. <laughs> so the crown did come from one and 
only really confirmed pharaoh of Egypt. Hmm. Female. A woman. Hmm. Yes, her name was Nikto Kreese. Nikto Kreese. She seems to roll the name around in her mouth a little bit. I find that fascinating. It is, of course, not surprising, of course, that I have not heard of her before. Yes, she actually was uh, hidden away. I had a hunch, and uh, we went uh, looking. Hmm. How fortuitous for all of us. It is a uh, wonderful piece that you've brought. I do wonder how it stayed hidden so long. Well, we know why. I mean, word of a female pharaoh. I... Hmm. Her name would have been scratched off of every, you know, story that was ever written. Yeah, so I would assume all the statues would have been demolished as they did other Mm -hmm. pharaohs. They yes, it was a very plain uh, pyramid, and Hmm. just by happenstance did I find a trail that uh, opened uh, a secret passageway. A secret passageway. There are rumors that there are passageways here, even at this estate. Oh, people love their secret passageways Mm -hmm. and their secret rooms. People love secrets. That is also true. But what I would like to discuss about the crown, speaking of secrets, Mm. we are under the understanding that something was taken from you by a particular man. Are you? He said that he would like to return them, but if you can give him a little bit of time, in exchange, we would also like to offer you the crown so that you are not missing something entirely. Interesting. I wonder how you came to know such a man. Well, we've had run-ins. With him before? Actually, his name was floated around in Egypt. Really? From what I know of him, he's a he's a survivor of something terrible. Yeah, that is what I have also heard. But of course, it doesn't excuse his defilement of my estate. I agree. Nor, nor the theft which happened. And the crown, while beautiful, does not make up for the fact that the scroll he has taken is an artifact few have even ever read, let alone have it absconded to wherever he has taken it. He did say that his intention was always to return it. Yes, a a common thieves balm when they are caught. Doc also snurts into his glass (laughs) off to the side. Do you not believe him, Doctor? Now, whether I believe him or not, there are ways to go about things, and there are ways that are dangerous to go about things. Clearly, Mr. Brady made his choice, yeah? Do you that agree? is true. We could always maybe have make sure that maybe Lillian brings him back. Well, I think you could do much more than that. I think the, f- the first position we should start at would be... A very simple street address where I can find Mr. Brady and resolve it directly. I don't think that's going to work. I can give my personal assurance that those scrolls will be brought back to you. And if they aren't, I will take Mr. Brady's head myself. Hmm, So forceful. Take his head. Interesting. Let's say that I believe you, Miss Lane. You, of very impressive fortune yourself, given your family name, would engage in such violence (laughs) as to take his head. I will very gently clear my throat when she says that. Not like to speak, but just to kind of indicate she wouldn't, I would. You you can see uh, Lynn isn't necessarily um, interrupted or caught off guard by the, the snorting and the throat clearing and all this stuff that goes on. She seems to be uh, very uh, focused. 
You see, I'm a collector, as you are both well aware of. Mm -hmm. And I have gone to great lengths to get that scroll. And there is another powerful man in this city Mm -hmm. who seeks to claim it as well. And I would like it back. We will give it back. Not we. Shit. It's why don't you? Why don't you drinky. roll? Why don't you roll luck for me, Miss Lane, to Damn make sure it. that that faux pas doesn't actually happen? Because I think you're probably feeling a little truthful I these am. days. Damn it! I got a seventy out of fifty-eight. So yeah, you say we. Her eyebrow goes up just slightly. I'm assuming the other the the other person that wants the scroll is Ho Fang. Very perceptive. So we don't want him to have it either. Yes. What Miss Lane, what this Ms. is easy to resolve, my friends. And you can tell that she's very much physically and um, socially directing that word friend to these two people. The resolution is simple. You tell me where to find Mr. Brady, and I will retrieve the scroll through many separate intermediaries. Are you writing something down, Doctor? Doc takes out a pencil and starts writing on a piece of paper in the back of his journal off the side. Watching, watching what Maeve and Lillian are doing. Can I have a couple of days? You personally? Yes. To look at it. To what end? I have great interest in a lot of old things. Things that are rumored to have any kind of mystical properties, anything that has any kind of rumor. I always check it out. Mm. Hence how I came across the crown. Though beautiful and the story is amazing, as with many things of that nature, they are often untrue. It's interesting. Many of the pieces in my collection currently are filled with conjecture and rumor around them. I've been told many things. The bells have some sort of mystical enchantment tied to them. The massive piece of the turtle man, she sort of chuckles, has some sort of special quality as if there is a a creature inside of it that is desperate to break free. It matters not what I believe in it, but what does matter is that it holds significant cultural value to our people. I agree, and that's why I will make sure that it comes back to you. Now, the way that it was taken from you, I agree, is a shame. And the fact that it was taken from you at all, um, I would prefer to have maybe asked permission. But that is not how he chose to work. And we have come after the fact. I don't think that Mr. Brady has it in him to ask permission in that way. Uh, I would very much agree. You see her look up, like almost directly up to the ceiling, just for a moment. And you see her almost wrinkles sort of appear on her forehead momentarily. Hmm. I would be willing to agree to these very specific terms. In exchange for a few days with the scrolls, I will hold on to the crown as a matter of leverage. Mm -hmm. it's worth something most certainly and I think that in that time those days with you studying it perhaps that study should be done somewhere that is safe secure there is no place safer here than my estate with my staff and well additional security Very few people will bother you, if any at all. And if you need a place to to go over what is within its contents, should you be able to read them, then I see no problem with that. The scroll must be returned, though. That must be agreed to. And of course, this does not relieve Jack Brady of his... His wrongdoing. He made his own bed. I guess I have to speak to him and see what he's planning to do with them. 
but I do want to look at them. Counter offer. Ooh. Ooh, fantastic. Is there something we can do for you to exonerate Mr. Brady and allow us, and by us, I mean Miss O'Shea, the time with the scrolls that she needs at a safe place of our choosing? And you would still get the scrolls and you could keep Nikto Kreese's crown for your collection. It's something I might be willing to agree to, provided certain incentives were placed on it. What incentives? She stands up very slowly from the table. Take a walk with me, Miss Lane. Can Miss O'Shea come? I don't believe she's part of this offer. I glance over at Sam. My my eyes remain locked on you, so... I stand up and go with... She heads out from the dining area and walks you out towards the... Basically, the the part of the estate that is the central location of the first floor. And she begins walking upstairs. Speaking of upstairs, Miss Fairchild, you have a serving girl with a knife to her throat and you're walking her upstairs. Stasi, where are you going with her? So, (laughs) that's a good question. From where the stairs are, what's closer? The, that big fancy door or the room that I came out of? where the other employee is. So the first door that you would enter into would be sort of that second door that you tried. The The big double doors are pretty far away. Okay. Not far away, but they're further in. They're deeper in. I need to find an open room. So I will, I guess, head back the direction from where I entered the house mm-hmm. to the first open guest room. Okay, so here's what you're going to do. You're going to make me a stealth roll at disadvantage because there are staff actively on this second floor and you will likely encounter them and you will have to figure out somehow uh, not to be seen. But the other door that, uh, the first door I hit, is that the locked door? Yes, it is. You have to get past this stealth roll to get to a clear room. I'm having to make a decision here. Life's just really a series of choices. The employee that I have with my left arm wrapped around her neck mm-hmm. smallish I mean what kind of build are we talking I would say that she's likely a little bit over five foot maybe five one she's probably about 95 to maybe 100 pounds at most so when we get to the top of the stairs what is the situation with other employees around us other staff around us. Like I said, so you get to the top of the stairs. Soon after that, there's a door on your right, which is locked, you know. Deeper in, sort of around this curve, there is, or this this bend to the left, there is going to be those big, those bigger double doors, right? That sort of segment off this portion of the upper part of the estate. You know that there are, there are people, there are staff members that seem to be up here that are moving around that either likely taking care of the window or they're making sure that, you know, that the house is prepared, that sort of thing. They could just be roving guards. You saw those outside too, so. Right. It's a stealth roll. It's at disadvantage. All right, we're going to take, we have a plan A and a plan B. Let's see how this turns out. Well, the stealth definitely didn't work, so that's a 96 over 85. Okay. Okay. So we are going to go to plan B. <laughs> so you fail the stealth roll. You are allowed, even though it's a disadvantaged roll, mm-hmm. you are allowed to push that roll. As I will remind you, failed push rolls are bad. Yeah. Uh. Not that the failure won't be bad, but failed push, push rolls are inevitably worse. Right. I'll whisper in her ear uh, again, Cantonese, to make sure she understands. Um keys you have keys she answers yes and i kind of maneuver her around open the door okay so you're pushing the roll then so i'll put that's that's your push mechanic then yeah okay so make the stealth roll again at disadvantage under a push that is a 20 under 85 okay so now roll the tens die again and it can't come up an eight or a nine. Just one? Just, just the tens die. 
us the tens die. Because if it does, it's a it's a pu- it's a fail push. Okay. So no eight, no nine. Yeah. A four is fine. Four. Yeah. I was just Full thinking. Four. A four. Four would be good. Three would be better. Two. Okay. You push the roll, even at disadvantage, you end up with a success. She basically gets flattened against the door for a second. She fishes out some sort of key and un- unlocks the door, and you walk in under under an extreme amount of stress, and you can feel her wriggling sort of underneath your... She's not trying to wriggle away. She's just... She doesn't want to go where you're sending her. Mm-hmm. But you get into the room. And shut the door. And you shut the door. Not and you hard. S- just, yeah, shut the door. You see the room has is lit by soft white lanterns. Two at the top, two at the far back, and there's a beautiful window that looks out onto the back of the estate. And it's huge. And in the center piece of that window is a massive white gorilla that looks up at you. Oh, God. Miss Lane, you head upstairs. (laughs) And as you do so, uh, you get to the luxurious portion of this estate. The tone and quality level of the carpets here change. Everything gets a little bit more, just a little bit more luxurious. Um, This reminds you, this level of luxury reminds you a lot of growing up where, you know, with your mother and father in Philadelphia. Uh, And she softly pads down the hallway until she gets to an enormous pair of double doors that are just beautifully rendered with a, dragon that has been just as a master would do has been milled into this or cut into this wood piece these two wood pieces these doors are massive eight eight feet tall uh, a true grand entrance and the the head of it comes down towards the handle and you can see that extension of the flame in its mouth it makes the the door handle and uh she uh just pauses and allows you to, to take the door in for a moment. I touch the door. This is beautiful woodwork. It is. Um, you must you must tell me who your crafter is. I I would love to use them in my in my home in the in the states. Oh, uh, this was crafted by an artisan many centuries ago for this estate. Oh, so probably not alive anymore. There are artisans who could continue to do this sort of work. Um, I know several, if you are interested. Absolutely. This is beautiful. She takes a very small metal key out and opens the door to this room and pulls, almost effortlessly pulls this door open. She gestures inside. I'm on guard. Uh, To be fair, I'm following at a discreet distance. You're stealthy. I mean, I'm not hiding. She knows I'm there. So I guess the question that I would have for you, Sam, is when they go in, are you interjecting yourself through that doorway when it closes? It depends on whether or not she is standing there pulling the door closed, looking at me, or she lets the door she's letting the door close behind her. I don't think she's letting the door close behind her. That not in that sort of body language. I think that she opens the door, she gestures for Miss Lane to enter and then she takes the back side of that handle and closes the door as she walks in. As Lillian takes her first step forward then, I will uh, kind of, I'll, I'll forcibly stumble over myself kind of in a, in a blubbering effort to um, how can I say, relieve myself of a guilty burden with Madam Lynn. Uh, humblest of apologies, Madam Lynn. <sighs> I've been meaning to speak to you about the intruder. You could see her stop. She has her hand on the door and Miss Lane's inside. She's in the the, the doorway. It, it, the door hasn't fully closed yet, obviously, but, but there is. She has placed herself between you and Miss Lane. You should know that he came at me with a, I don't know if it was a boning knife or a filleting knife. He only landed a graze, but. I'm sorry to hear that. Regarding my failure, I assure you, Miss Lane will see to it I receive appropriate disciplinary action. She looks quizzically at you. And I, I, I appreciate the garment as well. I'll be sure to launder it properly before returning it to your staff. But we really should be getting on. Oh, our conversation should take very long. I'm certain that no harm will come to her. 
She smiles. I'm afraid, Madam Lin, that there's an oath I have to keep. Miss Lane can't leave my sight. I'm sure you understand. She looks over to you, Miss Lane. You cannot leave his sight. Pray tell, how do you use the bathroom? Well, I, I know. Um, he is He is my bodyguard. I swear to you, no harm will come to you in this room. Sam, just, will, will the door remain unlocked? Unlocked, but closed. Sam, just wait outside the room. Understood, Miss Lane. Thank you. She carefully and respectfully seemingly, Sam shuts the door. She does not slam it in your face. She walks you deeper into this room. This room is uh, about the size of the dining room. So it's, I would say, about 40 by 60. It is cut uh, a third of the way through with a a very ornate archway, which has uh, similar uh, woodworking dragons that are from floor to ceiling. They're beautiful as well. All of the wood in here matches the dining room, whereas this is very dark and has a reddish tone to it. So red seems to be very much the color that Madame Lynn chooses to, or as her accent. It's the color of blood. I understand. It is. Uh, She has a very small table that is set up near a balcony. And there is a a window and some, a a balcony, a veranda, something like that. It's a very small porch that you can sort of look out on the, the rest of the estate. Out there on this, you know, maybe eight by four ledge is a sleeping gorilla. And she walks over to it and you can, it sort of rolls over almost like a, almost like a dogwood. It rolls over and she very patiently and casually just pets the gorilla. Now I'm feeling a little, a little more like I should have had Sam come in the room with us. <laughs> I appreciate your counter offer. I, I'm certain that, Miss O'Shea could make some use of this this scroll that I want so back so badly. I will not take Jack Brady off my portion of the table. He must serve some sort of penance for what he has done. Jack Brady has been through quite an ordeal, as I'm sure you have heard. And I completely understand that he, he needs to be punished for stealing from you. I if I were in your position, I would I would feel the same way. What type of penance do you have in mind? Because I have use for him. Do you? I do. My group and I are on a on a mission of sorts. Mm. Um, much like you are on a mission to save Shanghai from current political factions. Mm. Um we are on a we're on a mission of sorts to save the world. Save the world. Does the world need saving? Doesn't it always? I don't know. I uh, I suppose I don't do as much traveling as I used to anymore. In my younger days, I did travel all over this continent, scooping up what I could, researching history finding our cultural roots. I hope you can appreciate that a man like Jack Brady would be very useful to me. If you want him for some plaything, then just say. Oh, no, no, no. No, 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 no. It's 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 not like that. Um, he mm. comes with a, a wide variety of experiences and knowledge for what we're looking to accomplish. Are you familiar with who Jack Brady is really dealing with? I'll be honest, I, I, I don't. Do you, Would you care to enlighten me? Certainly, if for anything else, and to make sure that you have clear understanding. Mr. Brady's dealing with a political group called New China. They are a outfit that is looking to make some changes here locally. They're instigating a lot of the rebellious talk. Now, there are many factions doing that on their own, but uh, New China has some very specific aims. And you are not aligned with this political faction. No, I don't completely disagree with some of their aims, but my aim goes far higher than that. So you say you need Jack Brady's services, yes? I do. If I could ensure that he leaves the country, would that would that be helpful? 
I'm not sure how he pays his penance out of the country, but if that's something that you want, Lillian, if I may call you that. You may. Then that is something that you want. She sort of swishes some of the white gorilla fur with her finger. It's perfectly fine to want things. So what you want is Jack Brady at your service. And you want Miss O'Shea to be able to have time with the scroll. Yes, that, that is correct. Very well. Miss O'Shea said she would need two days. So two days with the scrolls for Miss O'Shea. Mm-hmm. And an assurance that Jack Brady leaves the country when he delivers the scrolls back. Very well. I'm willing to counter offer on your on your offer with something very simple. I have no problem saying yes to all of that. I can stay my hand. I cannot pry into your business. I cannot have my people follow you back to wherever Jack Brady is. I'm happy to do that. I'm happy to let Miss O'Shea have the time that she needs with the scroll, even if it needs to be done in a secure place that isn't the estate. Two days. But I have one condition. And what's that? You'll stay here with me for those two days, and you'll see what Shanghai has to offer. The estate here is vast. It is away from prying eyes, well protected, and you and I will have an opportunity to get to know one another. And perhaps... You hear what I have planned for this city. I'm going to make a persuade roll, Miss Lane. Could she roll her persuade? She certainly can. Unfortunately for her, because she failed a very important test last game, Mm -hmm. she'll do so at disadvantage. I get a 66 um, out of 81. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you have a 66 out of 81. I have a 13. And so I not only beat your success, I stage up on you. Essentially... Um, beating you with, with, with a, a level a level of success. Uh, and so as she sort of lays this out, is it the best negotiation? No. But nobody's hunting for Jack Brady. Maeve gets to work on the scroll. You just better hope that she can learn what she needs to learn as soon as possible. I agree with your offer with a slight modification that Sam can stay too. He can stay as long as he likes. But that door stays shut. You mean I have to stay in this room? Of course not. <laughs> we'll wander the estate, of course. Okay. You hear a grunt, a deep, resonant grunt from the far side of the room. And there's just, there's nothing there. And she immediately turns her attention. And she calls out in Cantonese. And Stasi, in the room, which is on the other side of this wall, the gorilla stands up to full height. And the staff member that you have with the knife at her throat, she starts crying. Please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. She's repeating it over and over again now. Uh, I will uh, reach behind me without taking my uh, without taking my eyes off of the beast. Mm-hmm. Sam, that's a noise you hear. Absolutely. F- 15 feet to your two o'clock. You hear... Like this heavy, deep, resonant sound. Oh, shit. Go ahead, Sazzy. And we'll very gently Mm -hmm. open the door. Uh Uh-huh. And back, take a couple of steps out the door. All right, I want a dexterity roll from you. Yes. Sam, go ahead and give me a listen roll. You see... The gorilla move. Make your dex roll. That is a nine under 65. Mm. Uh, 39 under 63 for my listen. That a door just opened down the hallway. You slip out of the room as fast as you can, Stasi. As you do, an enormous weight plows into the door, slamming it shut. Heard that. You hear a woman <laughs> scream inside that room. A horrifying voice like larynx crushing scream it gets garbled at the end from a sound that is likely flowing blood that's unmistakable sam something just happened down the hallway 
Oh, fuck. Lynn begins to move. Uh, she's stalking towards the door. What, what? What's going on? Something is wrong with one of the gorillas. And then you hear the roar, the smash, the woman scream. A few gentlemen downstairs at the dinner table hear that too. It's impossible to not hear a several hundred pound gorilla move around <laughs> upstairs. I will yell at the door. Miss Lane, stay where you are. The door opens. It's Madam Lynn. Stay in the room. I will rush down. Do I hear Sam yell? At? Yeah, you start hearing Sam yell from upstairs. Yeah, but do I hear him say... Stay in the room? Yeah, he's, yeah, okay. he's yelling, so... Okay. Well, because, like, basically I wanted to make sure, like, I know that Lillian's safe, so... It's hard to, hard to say. Okay. You're not visually there. Yeah. Well, I mean, if Sam's saying for her to stay in the room... Mm-hmm. Okay. Shit. So, um, I guess what I would want to know before we, before I get tuned up for some of this, um, Mr. Drummond, Mr. Uh, Tottenbach, doctor, excuse me, are you uh, engaging in any of this or are you going to put your fingers in your ears and say, this isn't happening, this isn't happening? Doc watches to see what Lynn's, what Miss Lynn's security does. Or her people react, yeah. Doc is not going to leap into the fray right at the moment because that is too many feet in the kitchen. He is going to, while he is worried that something bad is happening, that also didn't sound like Lillian. No. So he's... No, you've heard Lillian scream. Yeah, I've heard Lillian scream quite a few times. So that's that wasn't it. Uh, Lillian, are you taking any action as this thing gets started? Or are you staying in the room? Oh, no, I'm going to take action. What are you doing? I... The dresses that Maeve and I wore, the outfits, they're not yeah. really, like, run-worthy. <laughs> so, <laughs> you better so, hike that the, skirt yep. up. So I hike it up, and I run to the... And I do... I'm carrying... I am strapped carrying a revolver. Okay. I think both... Or I think Maeve and I both did... Yeah. Did thigh. She, has, she has a thigh knife. Yeah. I, I don't all, know if I did a knife or... Which we're all very concerned about. Yeah, and so I yell it at Madam Lynn. I'm like, just, Madam Lynn, I, I don't want you to get hurt. Please just stay back and let us handle this. And I run and I whip open the door. Okay, so she's she's opened the door a little bit, but you're oh. gonna you're gonna basically press your way through. Yep, and I kind of like you know I, I gently push her aside. We don't want you to get hurt. She um, gracefully steps out of the way and lets you through. Wow, that was way easier. Than I you don't have the time to think about it psychologically speaking, but she seemed to get a little a little fluid when you went to to like push or grab her like she sort of accepted the energy as it came in and moved around it she didn't offer a ton of resistance she's got gorillas that's why that's true okay so uh you are in the hallway and so what you can see is sam <laughs> in the hallway hi Lillian, stay in the room. Oh, there she is. She doesn't listen. I had every, I knew she was going to come out. This is, I got to play the role. Okay. Um, (laughs) Yep. Uh, So for what you two can see, Sam and Lillian, down the hallway, uh, just past the, I guess that's a question for you, Stasi, is when you exited that room, are you headed towards the stairways or are you headed deeper into the, the house up top? I am stepping out and then. When I step out, do I hear that big door off to the side open? No, absolutely not. You don't hear anything over a gorilla thundering into the wall and absolutely grinding a little girl to a pulp. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, you're safe. Oh, by the way, give me a sandy roll. Yep, I was waiting for that. You got to it takes a moment. You got to process it. This isn't about seeing a dead body. This isn't about death or murder this is you made a calculated choice to put someone's life a little bit in a different place a little rung kind of elevated yourself a little bit over another human which you've done before but maybe not so viciously at this point well it wasn't quite the plan but i guess there's nothing that can be done about it now so i'll deal with that trauma later Mm. add it to the pile oh that is a 70 over 55 oh very good so it's not what that operation was called when <laughs> I first started about it. <laughs> we will use this our Lovecraft die as we are we as we mm. are wont to do. There we go. Uh, that is five. You will lose five sanity and now make an intelligence test immediately. Yeah, that's not entirely surprising. 
Okay. And intelligence? Mm-hmm. What's your intelligence? 70. Okay. So I'm proficient at it. You one could say. <laughs> That is a 38 under 70, sir. Of course it is. So You um, wanted to fail that, by the way. So <laughs> the way this works is, um, in Call of Cthulhu, when you lose five or more sanity, you encounter a potential to have what's called a bout of madness. Now, the way bouts work, uh, sort of systematically speaking, is that you roll intelligence. And if you fail the intelligence test, what it is, is that your brain doesn't really rationalize what's happening. And you sort of, you sort of cover up all the brain meats with a bunch of clouds and then it's well it's been a terrible time maybe it hasn't been too bad when you succeed on the intelligence test your brain goes oh right i did that i just sacrificed a little girl so that i could live yeah Uh, and so what's going to happen is is you are going to um develop something Mm -hmm. um you won't encounter it just yet but you will develop something in the future um so i'm going to write a little note down here and in the future you're going to have a little present from your keeper to you. Okay. Uh, so. Getting a lot of mileage out of the word present. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, there are some gifts that you don't want. Trauma, well, the gift that keeps on giving in Stasi's life. You have no idea. Uh, Mr. Drummond, on, on 80, um, are you springing into action, sir? I'm going to make two quick assumptions. Mm-hmm. First is, is that if it's one of those giant beasts, it's completely under Madame Lynn's control. So whoever's with Madame Lynn is perfectly fine. We are not perfectly fine. I am going to start hurting people out the front door. Okay, by people, whom do you mean? Basically, whoever I can grab, whoever's next to me handy. So uh, you stand up and you are motioning to Jack, the doctor, maybe yep. the people who are around, hey, we got to go. We got to get the hell out of here. Yep. Okay. So I'm not one to require social combat. Uh, so I guess my question is, is is anyone going to listen to Drummond when he says go? Let's get out of here. Negative Ghost Rider. Okay. I don't imagine Jack would. Is he ushering us towards an area where there are, as far as we know, another gorilla? Uh, n- no, he seems to be ushering you like we need to leave. Like, let's go out the front door. Let's get the hell out of here. I don't think that's going to work. Mr. Drummond. I would say, though, depending upon your persuade, Mr. Drummond, um, that it, it is reasonable to to say that the rest of you would probably pick up on that. It is, if there are two 800-pound gorillas wandering around upstairs hurting people, you don't want to be anywhere near a loose gorilla. Oh, sure. But you're also not going to... What you get the sense of as you stand up and say, let's get the hell out of here, is that these people are too intertwined with each other's lives to simply leave people behind. Which could be an Achilles heel in your mind, but that's the sense that you get. I, I'm just going off of the fact that, you know, these things are 100% under Madame Lynn's control. It's a wonderful bedtime story to tell yourself. Sam, on 75. I, I do what I'm supposed to do, and I Wait. will follow follow bravely Lillian, uh, and I will say, uh, first door on the right, 15 feet down the hallway, something where I'm left. Um, so the two of you then continue going down the hallway. Is that true, Lillian, Sam? Yes, if I'm following yes. her and that's what she's doing, then that's what I'm doing. And, okay. I'm, and I will also say, what the hell do you plan on doing when you get there? Pull the revolver out of my out of my thigh holster. Whatever I heard is not going to be scared by that thing. Stasi, what I'm going to do is place you in a state of catatonia. Um, so you are, when the investigators round that corner and see you, you are against the wall against one of the far walls Um, you see her with with a a blade in her hand a knife in her hand and she is sort of with her both hands against her head trying to basically figure out like what happened she's visually unresponsive like when you approach she's uh, out of breath and and she's it looks like she's stuck mentally stuck do we recognize that it's her yeah, because she doesn't have a disguise on. She has, just have, she has different clothes on. Um, Sam, we need to get her out of the house before Madame Lynn sees her. I'm not going another window. If she doesn't seem to be aware of her surroundings, mm-hmm. then I will, I will simply lean into her midsection and pop her onto my shoulder. Okay. 
you have seen this before, Sam. This is essentially shell shock. Yeah. This, this is what this is. So she has seen something terrible. It's a horrible place to have that happen. During this time, like you, when you bend, bend just a little bit and sort of get her onto your shoulder so you can move her very quickly down the stairs, which are not far from you now, you hear a wild animal moving on the other side of that door. And it is sort of speckled with the sounds of wet, slick meat. You need to move with me. We can't, we can't leave you here right now. Uh, and I begin moving down the stairs. I agree with him. I'm, I'm not going to stay in a place where I could possibly be killed. Sure. And so um, as we're going down the stairs, do we see Madam Lynn's security detail coming up? Yeah. Madam Lynn wants you to go take care of the gorilla that is banging on that door. How's your Cantonese? Oh, shit. I don't know any Cantonese. I guess okay, it's like a- so you're some lady I'm yelling, blathering I'm on yelling in English. English. <laughs> yep, whatever. Um, so Madam Lynn is not far behind you, oh. the two of you. Uh, but she's far enough that Sam is going to be able to abscond a little bit down the stairways before she gets to where the door is. Um, so if you're continuing, that's fine. The detail gets there. And you can hear her yelling to them. Um, yelling is a strong word. Giving them specific orders. And she is saying a word over and over again. She becomes becomes very repetitive. You hear the sound of hand, like uh, someone's hand basically smacking on a door. And there seems to be like a, a cadence to it. Like she'll say a word. Then you hear you hear a smack like one, one, two, three, tap, tap, tap. And then a, and then a word in Cantonese. And then eventually, like as you get back down into the, well, into the, the middle of the first floor, the sound begins to sort upstairs begins to sort of dissipate. We need to hurry. When we get when we get downstairs, I'm going to yell for Jack. I don't know that Drummond is here. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so, those of you at the table downstairs hear Sam yell for Jack. Uh, I would come around the corner and be like, "Yeah, I don't know where Jack's at." I'm carrying someone over my shoulder and I say, we need to get her out now. And I will, I will turn so that they can see who the hell I'm talking about. And then I will turn around again. Now. What the hell? Do I see Drummond? Yeah, he's there at the table. Robert, help. What do you want me to do? Get her out of here. Well, come on. I'm going to grab her and run. (laughs) Okay. So I will say, given your... And I, I know how fast you move, Robert. Um, <clears throat> if you make a beeline for the door, you and Stasi will breach the door and go out into the front walkway and then eventually to the street, likely just as her rounds of catatonia begin to clear. You know, washed out. Uh, but you are definitely being hustled down a street. You have no idea why. The, the problem that you're continuing to deal with is the sound of that woman's voice screaming in your ears. It's still there. It's, it won't go away. You don't know why it won't go away, but it, it won't go away. It's still there. For the rest of you who did not immediately flee, soon after that happens and you kind of sort of collect a moment between the rest of you, Lynn is going to be coming downstairs. Doc stands up and neatly folds his napkin and puts it on the table, wipes his mouth. You have been a most gracious host. I do I do appreciate it. Thank you. Puts his hat on. <laughs> so this is what you call me. Be, I'm going to be safe for two days. You expect me to stay here while your animals go crazy? Miss Lane, my animals did not go crazy. Something happened. Indeed. Something did happen. I, I would like to know what. I have no idea. I'm not accusing you. But this is the second time something has happened in your in your home tonight. And I need my safety, you know, that, that my safety is promised, that I will walk out of here in, in, in two days. That is the agreement? Unless you were choosing to break our negotiation. I, I, I need your assurance. Y- you seem to have many enemies. Indeed. As any powerful woman does, something you should know. My enemies don't break into my home. My uh, gorillas are not aggressive unless they are provoked. Animals like them sense fear and all manner 
of emotions from people. This business across the lawn earlier tonight, they're meant to guard, just like any animal that takes up a guard. Have you not seen a dog chase a rabbit across a field? I have. It is the same theory, although the weight is admittedly different. The gorillas protect me, and they protect the estate. And when they see something amiss, they investigate. I mean, they have been with me for more than a decade. They are as close to any family member I have. Something, something happened upstairs. I do not know what yet, but I'm going to find out. I look around to the group. I have made a deal with Madam Lynn. Maeve, you get the time you need with the scrolls off-site. In the safe place of your choosing. She will not... Jack Brady is to leave the country with us when we leave. And his safety is, as far as is insured. And I am to stay on Madame Lynn's estate for the next two days while you are studying the scrolls. Okay, what if I need extra days? I'm just asking where, what, like, what the hard edges. Like, like, what if I need another day? Is she still welcome, or? Certainly. When you are done studying it, mm-hmm. when you are done preparing, and, and whatever secrets you might uncover, um, then you are to send a, a, a messenger, call the house, this is perfectly reasonable. And then, certainly, Miss Lane will be, her time as a guest here will be over. You're, you're okay? Um, Sam will be, will, will be joining me. And Madeline has assured me that I will be perfectly safe. And no harm will come to me. That's correct. Mentally, physically, or otherwise. I hope that you and I have a wonderful few days. There is much about Shanghai you can learn here. If you are truly interested in what its future might hold. Yes, I am am looking forward to that discussion. Wonderful. Now, seeing as I have some items to attend to, including a guest room, then I would like all of you to have a wonderful evening. You as well. And feel free to um, call or cable as necessary. Some of you run from the estate. Some of you walk. Others stay. And I think that's a perfect time to end. And so uh, thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Masks of Neon the Temp. Mm-hmm. We hope you've enjoyed it. I have no doubt you will enjoy next week. Thank you and good night.